to everybody. For those of you who don't know, my name is Michael Forrest, and it's Quest Time. Now, before we get going, I'm going to ask if you can all stay off of the stage area. This way, nobody blocks this display here. And also, it has the benefit of, you know, uh, giving me a little bit of room to move around with this whole hosting thing, right? Um, now, if I can direct your attention to the menu wheel in your lower left there, you're going to notice at the very top of that is an icon uh, with a microphone on it. And if that is clear, that means we can hear you and what's happening in your environment. Um, I've gone ahead and I've turned it to red, which means you're muted. And that means if somebody comes into your space and says, hey, are you still on that thing? Don't worry, we're not going to hear any of that. Um, also, you know, but... You know, and this way, if you know, maybe you have a dog that starts barking, you're not going to face social ruin back to campfire by becoming known as the avatar that suddenly started barking during its quest time. Now, you're also going to notice that there is a, an emoji uh, there with pink cheeks and a smiley face. And when you press on that, uh, it gives you, you know, ways to express yourself even though you're muted. So, like, if I say something really, you know, deep and powerful and it really touches you and you feel it start to build up all of the emotions, you can just let it out and let it flow just like that. Right. If maybe I've got some backup dancers backstage and they, you know, they come out and we break into it's quest time, the musical. Right. And you're all very impressed. You can throw up the applause that I live for and I can take a moment to drink that all in because it feels good. Right. Now, also, if I ask you guys a yes or no question, you can say yes by smiling like this or you can say no by frowning like that. It seems like uh, Decker here is like saying no. It's not the same thing as bullying. We don't have bullying as an option. Sorry. Um, what you can also do is if I say something funny, right, and you decide to, you know, laugh at it, you can do the silly face emoji here, right, just like that, to show me that you're laughing like that. Then there's this, right? This here, this is not how you ask a question. We will be taking questions and comments at the end. This is how you get my attention if something's gone wrong. Like, for example, you know, if I'm up here and I'm waving my hands around like this and it looks like I'm talking but no sound's coming out, that might be a good time to press that button. Now, if I see just one hand go up like that, I'm just going to keep on going. But if I see five of them going up, I notice there's a problem. Like maybe this display behind me has burst into flames. Don't laugh. That's, uh, that actually happened one time. We used to give our moderators Terraformer, and which meant, you know, they could do like our special effects and stuff. And uh, they decided one day, because they have a sense of humor, they decided that they were going to burn down the set throw one of the performances. And that's why we don't give them Terraformer anymore. Because, you know, hey, lesson learned, right? We do still have some cool special effects coming up at the end of the show when we press this big red button, right? This big red button is going to give a, a cool ending for us. All right, so now, uh, so stick around to see that, you know, and we'll, uh, we'll check that out. All right, uh, let's see here. So, uh, yeah, okay, well, while you guys got that emoji panel open up, I'm going to ask you some questions this way I can know how to proceed. How many of you are new Quest users? Let me see some smiles, some hearts, anything like that. Raise your hands up. Give me some indication if you're new. Anybody? Anybody new? All right, some seeing no's, no. Yes, yes. Okay, so kind of evenly divided. How many of you are on a quest right now? If you're on a quest, you see some hearts. You see some love for the quest. Anybody on a quest? All right, cool. At least half the room. A little bit more. All right, that's good. Uh, how many of you are on a go and thinking about it, getting a quest? Anybody on a go users here today go thinking about it? All right, couple. That's that's cool. All right, good deal. Okay. Uh, all right, so it gives me some idea of how to head out. Now, when I first got my uh, when I first got my quest, I was coming from an Oculus Go, so I was very focused on getting that second controller. Because as you know, like Go users, they have one controller, so they have one hand in all space. And I grew up in Brooklyn, right? So I'm used to talking with my hands a lot, moving around like this. And on an Oculus Go, I felt I wasn't expressing myself as fully as I could. So I was really looking forward to getting that second controller, so I could go like this. Right. And, uh, you know, so I'm looking forward to that. But you know what? This is so much more than your hands. Right. This is also your feet. This is how you interact with your environment in all space. And, you know, uh, so it's a lot more than that. And when you when your system first arrives, right, you're going to take a look and you're going to realize that is a lot of buttons. There's a lot of buttons on the thing. And it can take a little bit of time to get used to it. It can take a couple of days, you know, to, to a week or so. And I like to make sure that everybody got, has a firm grasp of stuff, even if you've been around a while. You may pick up on something that, you know, you didn't know before uh, with regard to the controls. And I try to do it in a way that's fun. We're going to be moving around a little bit. Uh, this way, you know, if you are used to it, you'll still have a good time. And listen, if you're here already, you know some stuff that we don't have to cover, right? You know, like how the left thumbstick moves you around. Or you wouldn't be standing here in the room. You haven't picked out a way to stand. You also know that the right thumbstick is going to turn you in these nice big circles like this, right? And also, if you combine them. You can do these big, elaborate circles that make my presentation so much more dramatic. If everybody does this, they move in these big circles, and I look out in the audience, it looks like you guys are ballroom dancing, so you go ahead and give that a try, go in these big circles like that. Let me see. I'm going to come in the audience and try it myself. Let's see. I'm going to do these big circles like that. You know. And I always say, I wish you guys could see what this looks like, but you know what? It turns out now you can. We have a YouTube channel, so if you want to see yourself on YouTube, all right, we usually post them up a few days to a week after the show. 
Uh, if you just look up at uh, Raven Eye right there, you just look right up there and just wave at the camera. And you can see that we've got Parker123. We've got Reverence in the audience. We've got Harry here. We've got Shark, cool name. We've got Cam. We've got uh, Ricochet D. And over here, we've got uh, Scottsco right here. You know, so just wave out there and say, hey, to YouTube. Hey, YouTube, come into Allspace. It's a lot of fun. You should join us. You can come to our events and hang out. All right, cool. All right, so let's see what else we got here. Um, so, yeah, uh, about these buttons here. Let's, let's get started with these. Um, on your right controller and your left controller, you have these grip buttons here. And this is how you're going to interact with your environment. This is how you're going to pick up basketballs, rockets. And if you're in the world's beta program and you're building worlds, you're going to be able to pick up objects, right, uh, with your grip button. But, when, you know, and place them where you want them to be, right? The thing of it is, is when you pick things up in the world editor, now the behavior of your right thumbstick is going to change, right? If you move your thumbstick left to right while holding something in the world editor, the size or the scale of the object is going to change. If you move your thumbstick forward or backward, that object is going to be pushed away from you or it's going to be pulled closer to you, right? So it's important to keep that in mind, how uh, that can change. Also, your left thumbstick here, it does more than move you around, doesn't it? Um, if you find that your vertical, like when I first got my quest, I went in the campfire to test it out, right? And I was feeling good, you know, because I'm on a quest, right? And I was feeling like I was a little bit above everybody, right? And I looked around and all the avatars, they seemed like, oh, whoa. And I was like, what's going on? I got taller, right? And, and I, I looked down and I realized I'm floating like this high off the ground, Right, and the reason for this is because um, on the quest you got to worry about your vertical height. If somebody's starting to wilt, like a Parker, perfect. Now, if you press down on your left thumbstick, show everybody what happens. Boom! See that? So if your vertical height changes, like you're feeling too short or too tall, you just push down on that left thumbstick, like Parker can do, and boom, right? That's called recentering. So if you are worried about, you know, your vertical height changes and you're feeling uncomfortable, you're too short, you're too tall, you know, you can uh, just press down on that left thumbstick and you'll be as tall as everybody else. Right? So it's important to keep that in mind. All right, also you have, uh, now, while these are a lot of buttons, it's important to remember that some of these buttons do the same thing, all right? And that makes it a little bit easier. In fact, this select button here, right, and this right trigger, and your left select button, if you have your left pointer enabled, they all do the same thing. That's how I know everybody's name so quickly. That's how I can uh, point out and see Hummingbird, one of our regulars who just joined us. And I can, you can press down on these and move your arm through the crowd, and you're going to see everybody's name tag appear above their head just by moving your arm like this right around and holding down one of those buttons, right? Now, your left trigger button, that does something different too. Your left trigger button right here, right, what that's going to do is that's going to speed you up. So if you're walking or flying and you press down on that, all of a sudden you can accelerate, and I can run down off the stage, right? And I can run in the audience, and I can do laps around the room really fast like this, and if I keep going in a circle, Maybe we can make a whirlpool. Maybe we can make a tornado. Maybe we can make our own personal hurricane here at West Time Set. All right, let's see that going. Let's see, everybody got that? Let me see everybody moving around. Cool, cool. If you're getting dizzy, don't be doing this. And if you do get dizzy in VR, don't worry. We're going to show you a nice, useful tip to help you get through that. All right, now also, uh, yeah, this is, if you're having a room scale experience, right? And I, this, I don't know if this is happening, but if you're having a room scale experience, if you're playing VR and you stand up, and you go and you walk out past your main menu. Whenever that happens, for some reason, people ask you, hey, open your main menu. And you're like, oh, man. And you look around, and where is this thing? And you're looking around, you're looking around. It's like always behind you, right? You got to remember on an Oculus Quest uh, that the main menu is in your hands at all times. Some handy information there, right? On your left controller, this flat button down toward the bottom, this one right here, right? When you press on that, your main menu is going to open up in front of you, right? And, like, you know, you can do, like, a little bit of style. You just flip your hand out and press that main menu button. Right, and all of a sudden it opens up, and you flick it out again, and then it opens up again, just like that. Right, and uh, so you know you go and press it on that, you can open it, you can close it, just like that. A little bit of style. I'll be honest with you, that blue and white triangle button, I haven't touched that thing in months. Right, I just haven't needed to because I got the menus right in my hand at all times. All right, now uh, also what you have here is this teleport button, and what's cool is you've got it on both controllers. Right, so you can teleport with your right or your left hand. I'm hoping you're in a line dash teleport transition because it's a lot of fun. It feels like you're flinging, flinging yourself across the room, right? And uh, so what you can do, right, is if you basically, if you hold down one of the teleport buttons, let's try with the right hand, and you aim it at the ground, you're going to see your target circle appear on the floor, right? And then if you press it, or if you aim it right across the room, as soon as you let go of that button, boom, you get flung right across the room, just like that. It's a lot of fun. What you could do now is also take your left controller and uh, make, you know, press the teleport button down, look at the target on the floor, and as soon as... You let go, boom, you get thrown right across the room, just like that. It's a lot of fun. Uh, also, if you do both, you hold down both, you can make an X, right, on the floor. And if you let go at the same time, you do this whole zigzag motion, like a zigzag, right? Let's see, try that again. Let's see, zigzag, uh -huh. right, like that. Now, the first time I did this, I was at the Yoongiverse, right? And while I was at the Yoongiverse, um, 
back then it was held in a really large world, right? So after it was over, I went around exploring, and I'm looking off off the edge there like that. I'm looking down, and I walked a bit too far, right? And I fell. And as I'm falling, I'm falling down there, and I'm like, oh, no, I'm going to respawn. What do I do? And I look, and I see that there's a cliff there. And I hold out my hand, right? And I hold down that teleport button, I lock onto that cliff with my teleporter target, and I let go, and boom, I was thrown onto the cliff before I could respawn. And in that moment, I knew I was finally getting used to the controllers. And don't worry, if you're new, you won't, you'll, you'll only take a little while for this to happen. There's going to come a time where you will always feel the plastic in your hands of the controllers, but there's going to come a time when these feel like your real hands, right? You know, and uh, for example, if I tell everybody, hey, look at that window right there, you know, uh, I don't think about how I'm pointing. I just point just like that, you know, just, just like that and just do that gesture. I don't have to think about what buttons to push. And for those of you who don't know, the gestures kind of work like this. If I squeeze down my middle finger, right, like this, uh, you know, I, now I'm pointing, right, just like that. I can make the Old Space logo. I can take, like, you know, a picture of you guys, and then I can squeeze the trigger finger to take the picture and remember this moment forever, right? And uh, what else can we do? We can give each other, you know, a Brooklyn hello. Everybody give me a Brooklyn hello by going like this. All right, awesome, very good. All right, now if we squeeze down our trigger buttons here, right, you got your thumbs up. Right? You got two thumbs up. It's like that. Maybe I'm doing a bad job. Give me two thumbs down. Right? Maybe maybe the jury's still out. Maybe you don't know. Maybe you're a little confused. You can go like this. Remember one of the first quest times, somebody was in the audience going like this. I thought that looked pretty cool. Right? Uh, somebody came up to the stage and went like this, like a bird. Right? That's pretty neat. And if you see somebody doing a gesture that you like, right, uh, you just mirror them. That's the best way to pick this stuff up. So if somebody's doing something that you like, you just copy them. Right? And, uh, you know, one of the first times I was in on a quest, Went to a, I was acoustic music with Luke, and I was dancing around. And one of my friends came up to me, and they were doing all these different hand gestures. And I was trying to mirror them to keep up. And inside of a couple of days, I wasn't able to do all that stuff, too. So it's the best way to learn is just by copying each other. So if your friends do something cool and you want to learn how to do it, like, what's going on here? This is a cool movie. Look at a, what is this? William, uh, Met, William Met Hudson. Show everybody that. Do that again. Good. Look at that. That's cool. That's really awesome. You got some good body language there. That's, that's, really, that's really great. All right, uh, so you can totally do that. So, like, basically, if somebody's doing something that you like, just copy them, and it'll, uh, you know, definitely help. All right, so let's see who else can we, what else can we have here. Um, yeah, this is pretty important. All right, uh, what you're going to find is that don't press this now, because if you press this now, you're going to disappear, and I'm going to feel it, right? But the best route out of all space is this right here on your right controller. You've got this bottom flat button here, right? And when you press it, that's like an eject button. It's going to pull you out of all space, and you're going to be taken to the Oculus home screen, and you'll have a choice to quit or resume. That resume button is great because if you're like dancing around the universe, you're moving around, you accidentally press that button and you get thrown out of all space like that, you press resume, you come back in, no one will ever know you were gone. Right? And you keep on dancing and hope nobody noticed, right? You're like, all right, all right, cool, I'm back. All right, did anybody see? I don't think they did. All right, cool. All right, good. All right, so now, uh, let's see, but it's also a good to press this button when things go wrong, right? So let's say, for example, that you're, uh, you know, you're in all space and all of a sudden you turn your head and the whole world moves with you, right? That can make you feel kind of sick, right? You know, or maybe, um, you know, all the edges of the screen turn black and all your friends are frozen in space like this and everywhere you look, this black void, you know something's wrong, right? So what you want to do is you press that bottom flat button on your right controller, right? And that'll take you out of all space. You can just, you know, quit the app right there and then restart it and you come back. And this is going to solve most of your problems. But occasionally that bottom button's not going to work because if your device it freezes and you press that button and nothing happens and you need to get out of there in a hurry, the very best thing you can do is to restart your headset. And a lot of people, they'll restart their headset while it's off their head. I used to do that. And what happens is, um, you know, if it's not in a charge cycle and the light doesn't light up, you know, light up when you plug it in, you might be thinking that your, you know, your device is broken like I did. Uh, ever since that time, what I do is I restart my device while it's still on my head. And the way you do this is you take your index finger and you're going to notice there's a button right on the side, right? And you press and you hold, what you do is you take your other index finger on the other side and you squeeze those two together and it makes your avatar look like you're concentrating very deeply. Right, and you squeeze those buttons together, and after about four seconds, right, you'll be concentrating so hard that your avatar disappears, right, and you get plunged into the darkness. And in the darkness, right, ten seconds go by, and you start wondering why did Oculus make t resetting take so long? I don't know. And after about fifteen seconds, you start thinking about life, you know. You're thinking about friends you haven't seen in a while. You wonder how they're doing. Twenty seconds go by, you start thinking about, you know, that puppy you had when you were a kid. That was a good dog, right? And you start thinking about all these things. And then, all of a sudden, out of the darkness, you see the Oculus logo, and it starts to pulse. And when it starts to pulse, you take your hands away like this, right? And then your device will start up as normal. You come right back into all space, and this is going to solve almost all the problems that you're going to have in here, 
right? One thing, one thing you're going to notice is occasionally something weird is going to happen. Like I came out of all space once and I saw this message that said Oculus Home is closing, right? And it had, you know, it, it had one big blue button to press. It was just okay. So I pressed okay because it was the only choice. And then the, the device just said loading, right? So I restarted the device, you know, and it still said loading. And it's five minutes of this. And, and so I knew something was seriously wrong. So what I did was, uh, you know, I, I found out, I went to Google and I said, Google, I'm having this problem. What do I do? You know, and Google said a lot of people were having this, this issue. And the only thing you could really do was a factory reset. Now, I like to mention a factory reset because you should know it's an option if something serious happens. It puts the device back the way it was when you first got it, right? The only thing is, if you have any pictures or any apps installed, you're going to lose all that. You're going to have to re-download all your apps again. The good news is you won't have to pay for them, but all of your settings are going to be lost. So you might lose it, like you know, your Beat Saber scores. So you got to understand, this is a serious maneuver here and only to be used in an emergency. But it's important people know it. All right, now, if you're on a quest, you're already familiar with the Guardian system, right? Uh, because, uh, you know, let's see. Oh, wait. Okay, cool. Uh, you're already familiar with the Guardian system because you know, you've danced with the robot, you've done the tour, you've, you know, you've played with the blimp and all that, right? Uh, good time, good time. But you got to know how you can use the Guardian system to you to your advantage while you're in all space, right? And the way this works is, you know, listen, if you're going to mess with your Guardian system, understand that, you know, uh, you don't want anything to happen. Like a lot of times in all space, you'll see somebody walking along, they're having a good day, and then all of a sudden they go like this, boom, just like that. They hit a wall. That's not cool, right? And what can happen is, um, you know, you need to be careful so you don't damage your device and you don't want to injure yourself, certainly, right? So what you do is when you move around your guardian, especially when you're new, lean with your hands. And when you get to the edge of your guardian and you see that grid appear, right, right in front of your hands like that, you can still touch your thumbsticks, right? And because you can still touch your thumbsticks, right, what you can do, like if you get, uh, you know, dizzy in VR, for example, right? Uh, one thing you can do is you can take a look at your hand like this and focus on it until the dizziness passes. And then you take away and take the world, you know, take it, you know, take the world back in until it passes. But you can use a guardian system for this purpose too. And what you do is you go up to the edge of your guardian, right? And while you're there with your hands out like that, you've got, you know, uh, your hands like this, and you got the, the grid right in front of you, and you can move those thumbsticks around, and you turn and you move around in all space while in reality you're standing still, right? And you lock it onto something like this display here. So like, let's say that this display is my real world wall, right? I've locked onto that, and I step away from it. I back up to evaluate and I'm like, yeah, okay, I feel more, you know, grounded because I'm anchored to reality. Oh no, I've fallen off this into the audience. And now the audience, like, you know, you guys get, you know, come around me and try to make me dizzy. Go ahead, do your best. Let me see how you're doing there. All right, well, that's good. You're better than the last group I had, but honestly, you know, uh, that's not affecting me at all because I can still see that giant display. And I know that's my real world wall. So I feel connected to the real world. You'll notice I'm not like breaking my sentence. I'm talking freely. Right? This does no trouble at all. Because I can still see that display. You guys aren't even trying. Is that all you have? Really? You guys are a big disappointment. Really, seriously. Okay. So what I'm trying to say here is by connecting, and it doesn't have to be something big like that. Like let's say you have a table in the world, real world, right? You can line up your VR environment, say like with the edge of the stage, and that's your table. And that gives you a frame of reference, and this will help, you know, keep you feel, you know, make you feel steady by anchoring yourself to the real world. Another cool thing is that you can you can transition between a standing and a room scale experience pretty effortlessly in all space. So let's say if I'm up here and you know this is my second event today and I'm like, oh man, I've been hosting all day. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I can't go on, right? What are you going to do, right? What you can do is like I can walk up to the edge of my, my guardian, right? And I stick my hands up and I make sure I got enough room to stick my head through. And I stick through my, my head through it, the, the, ca the, the camera goes off, the pass-through camera, and I can see the real world. I say I got my coffee right here, I a sip of that. And I look over here and I've got my chair right there. Right? So I can go and I can go into my chair like this, right? I can turn around, I can sit in, I can line up a circle, just like this, get nice and comfortable. And then I press OK, right? Saying so I'm having a you know, stationary experience now, right? And then what'll, what'll happen is, you know, as soon as I press that button, I'm back in VR. And you know what? It turns out I never left all space at all. And this works in the other direction too. What can happen is, like, let's say that, you know, I, you know I, was, I was monitoring an event one time, right? And I felt like getting up and walking around, and it's a big deal for me. So what happened was, you know, I, I stood up. Right? And, you know, okay. And I got a good step in my guardian. It usually works. But sometimes on the quest, your guardian's going to get lost because, you know, maybe there's a change in light level. And for whatever reason that your headset can't resolve its position. So it wants you to draw a new boundary because normally that's not a big deal. But when you're hosting, when, when you're monitoring an event, you only got two minutes left in the event. It's a pretty big deal. So all of a sudden, I'm drawing out my boundary and I'm like, Oh no, of all the days I had to moderate for an admin. Why? I'm never going to get back in time. I won't be able to get in. Oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And all of a sudden I close the loop 
and the grid comes up out of the ground, right? And I find I'm still in alt space. I never left, right? And you can do this too. What happens is, let's say like when you do this, what happens is your avatar's hands will freeze like this. I always pause for effect there. And you know what happened one time? One time what happened uh, was that I went to do that bit and I actually disconnected. And the whole audience is like looking at my avatar's up here frozen like that. And they're like, they're like, look at him. He's so invested. He's so into the role. Look at him. He's got such presence. He's just so into it. He's so convincing. And then my avatar disappeared. And they're all like, what's going on? It was pretty funny. I was, only, I was back a couple minutes later. But, you know, that can happen. That's one of the benefits of a live performance, right? All right. Another cool thing that you can do, and uh, this is really useless information, but it's just fun to do, is if you go up to the edge of your guardian system and you, stay, you know, make sure you got enough room to put your head through it, right? And, you know, you stick your head through it and you, you, the pass-through camera goes off, right? You know, you see the real world. Next time you do this, do it really slowly because there's a sweet spot where you can see both realities at the same time, and this will enable you to, see, you to see all space avatars in your home environment or your office or your living room or wherever you, you know, wherever you do your VR. You'll be able to see the avatars in your actual home space, right? And what's cool about that is, like, you know, you'll get a sense for the scale. Like, I had no idea that avatars in all space were about, like, six feet tall, right? You know, uh, and you get a real sense for that when you can see them in a familiar environment. It's pretty neat. You know, so give that a try. All right, now, one of the cool things about Quest is it just works. This doesn't mean it can't work better. There's a lot of accessories that can enhance the experience, like uh, those earbuds that you can get. They hang down from the sides, right? Now, I don't know what I look like when I'm, you know, in VR, but I, I think when I'm wearing these earbuds, I look kind of fancy, right? You know, uh, and what happens is I got mine, and I had my Quest for about a month, and I had to be used to what a great sound experience it is. There's no real feedback. You know, so I really didn't think these were going to do anything much. I put them in and I went to the campfire to test them out. And did you guys know there's a breeze in the campfire? Nobody told me this. I went over to that fence there and, all, and I could hear the water rushing. And I was like, I, I've been in all space for like a year and I never heard that. Right. So it turns out there's a lot of ambient sound in all space that can make the experience more immersive. Uh, and, you know, it can pull you in and then make you feel like you're here even more, you know, which is kind of what it's all about. Right. To feel like, you know, we're all in this shared space together. And that can, these can really enhance the experience. Another thing is uh, occasionally, when I first got my headset, listen, a lot of people say that the Quest is uncomfortable, especially when you're first starting out. And why do people feel this way, all right? It's because Oculus doesn't advertise enough that there's a breaking in period, right? You're going to find that, uh, you know, the insert, right? And when you first get it, it could be a little uncomfortable and you feel the balance is off a little bit. It's because there's a breaking in period. And the oils in your face over time, like over the next week or so of having it, right, will actually soften the material up, right? But when you first get it, the first thing you want to do is, oh, I'm going to have to modify my device. People will try different head straps. People will try, you know, uh, counterweights and external battery packs and all this kind of stuff. And all that's great. But you're going to want to wait about a week or so, uh, you know, a week, a week, two weeks of use before you do that. Because what's going to happen is if you modify it too early and then you go through that breaking in period and then the balance will be thrown off all over again. And then you're going to be left with the impression that the Quest is uncomfortable. I know people have actually returned the Quest because of that. But after about a week or two of use, it feels like you're not wearing it at all, right? These are just your eyes, just like these are just your hands, and you're just here, you know, to, you know, together with all of us, right? So it's a, it's a good thing to know. All right, now, uh, also, you have the inserts that protect your lenses and your headset, and protecting your headset, you can't do better than getting, like, one of these travel cases. The box that the uh, Quest comes in is really great to store it in because um, you want to protect your device. But if you're going to move around, you know, having a travel case really helps because you want to protect your device because, listen, if something happens to it, like maybe you leave it out on a table and the sunlight hits and it damages your lenses, what's going to happen is uh, it's not like losing a toaster. If you're in VR a lot and you've made friends and you have relationships in here, uh, you're going to register it as an actual loss. I've seen it happen, so take good care of your equipment. If you want to try any of these accessories, what you can do is if you go to altvr.com, you're going to see on the upper left where it says channels, you're going to see, uh, it says, you know, all these event channels that are in all space, some pretty good ones. And you're going to see uh, Raven Hall events, like it says up on the sound booth there. And when you go uh, to Raven Hall events, you're going to see on the left-hand side all these products that we just talked about. So if you want to try any of them, the links are right there. You'll also see a join Discord button. You can join our Discord, you know, hang out with us, help us put on events like this. And you'll also see the most important button on the Internet, the subscribe button, right? We don't get paid to do this. And it lets all space know that you enjoy our content and it's a great, great way to say thank you so if you enjoyed your experience here today you know press the subscribe button it really helps us out a lot all right now we're gonna be taking questions and your comments and all that maybe you tried an accessory i haven't mentioned and you want to or maybe you know you have some burning questions there what we're going to do is we're going to make a raise hand button appear on your lower right as if by magic 
Now, once that's there, right, I'm going to see your name appear on the list if you press on that. And uh, in the meantime, while we're waiting for that to fill up, if you're on Twitter and you want to follow us, you can find us at underscore underscore Uncanny Valley, right? Uh, I know it looks like one underscore, but it is actually two. All right, let's see. Who do we have? Anybody? I don't see anybody on the list yet. Okay, so if you don't have any questions, all right, anybody? Oh, here we go. It took a minute. We got Chad. Chad, you have a question? What's up, Chad? Where are you? Hey, Chad, I'm over here. What up? Over Chad, here. how's it going? What's up, Chad? What's up, man? What's new? This is so What's cool. This is my first time ever in here, so I'm like... Welcome to Allspace. Yeah, That's this awesome. is awesome. Yeah, it's um, a good how feeling, often man. Do cool. you guys, how often do you guys do these uh, like events where you guys talk about everything? What up? Everybody? All right, well, Raven Hall events, we cover <laughs> about eight events a week. We're about to add a new one, so we're going to get a little nuts. We're going to have about 10 a week in the beginning cool. of that. Uh, it's going to be a really cool thing. We have a uh, go time twice a week, quest time twice a week. We have uh, inspirational stories where we uh, at I am possible. Uh, let's see. We also have flight time three times a week where we teach people to fly in all space and, you know, take questions and all that kind of stuff. And you can fly these talent ships around They're like hovercrafts. It's a lot of fun. Uh, let's see. We also have Braden. Braden, you have a question? What's going on, Braden? What's up, Braden? How, how many oh. uh, of the new events, how many days will it be on uh in the beginning we're going to try two days a week and see how that goes see how people like it i think people are going to love it because we have a lot of special effects in that event uh it's going to be it's going to be really cool i don't think anything's been tried before in all space like this it's definitely worth checking out so keep an eye on the event calendar and you'll uh you'll you'll be seeing that coming all right parker one two three you have a question or a comment let's see get you on the megaphone there just keep moving around the list there we go parker what's up where are you, Parker? Um, Parker, where are you? I was wondering, are you guys live streaming or? No, we don't live stream. What we do uh, is we record them and then later on we edit them because I like to have like that musical intro. You know, I like uh, to have like, you know, because when I stop filming, I can't move the camera around. So I like to show people how, what it looks like when the talent comes through. Listen, if you guys have any more questions and I haven't answered you, uh, don't worry because at the end of this event, we're going to, uh, f uh, to the Raven Hall Flight Academy where we teach everybody to fly. Uh, and if you have any questions, I can take them there, okay? Uh, in the meantime, if you have learned anything today, please share it with the people that you come in contact with. Um, because, like, you know, say you're in a campfire and you see an avatar, and he's, like, you know, this far in the ground, he's stuck in the ground like that, right? And you go, hey, what's wrong? And they look up at you and they go, I'm on a quest, and I'm stuck in the ground, right? All you have to do there is just tell them to push down on that left thumbstick. They'll pop up and they'll feel better. You'll feel better, you know, because you help somebody, and that's kind of how we help keep this thing going. And that said, we're going to go push this button now and show you guys what happened. All right. Oh, thanks, Joe. You're pointing out the button. All right. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take a stage block rough here. If anybody wants to come up here and help me push it, you know, come on, help me push the button. And when we push it, right, when we push it, right, uh, a ship's going to come by the window and fly up with the back, right? We push real hard, right? One, two, three. Push harder. It's hard as you can. Raven Hall Talon Aircraft en route to your Look position. The there it goes. There it goes. We gotta catch it. All right, head up back. Let's head up back in the backyard there. We're gonna meet it before you know before it lands. Let's go. All right, cool. If I didn't take your questions, you're gonna come with us to the Raven Flight Academy and join us there. All right? Just waiting for the ship to come down here. All right, here it comes, everybody. All right, it's gonna land. It's gonna pop out a portal. We're gonna go into that portal and we're gonna go to the uh, Criminal Flight Academy. We're gonna learn how to fly. And you can fly these ships, by the way. If you wanna try flying one of these, you can Talon fly Aircraft is now boarding right, outside for transport to the Raven Hall Flight Academy. Please exit the building and step into the blue light. Thank All you. Right, thanks for coming, everybody. You've been a great audience. See you there.